you have any? Do you have a number in your head that you think? I would say it's well over 80. You think that many? Well over. There is no sentence that I can impose that will truly be enough. This video contains the interview of a convict who has killed over 20 women. Richard Cottingham murdered at least 18 young women and girls in New York and New Jersey between 1967 and 1980. He was nicknamed the New York Ripper, the Torso Killer, and the Times Square Killer since he was convicted of three murders that occurred there that included mutilation. It wasn't until 1981 and 1982 that the police began to link him to any of the crimes. His victims were widespread, and he was careful not to kill or dispose of any of them in exactly the same way. Uh, it's too close to dinner. <laughs> it would be a shame. No, 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 don't eat it. Hold on. Hold Cottingham is able to give a detailed account of his movements, even years later. This was possible because he had a routine and planned his actions carefully. And when I went in about 40 or 50 feet, the car stopped. I, could, I, I got stuck in the mud. Mm -hmm. So we stayed here about 10, 15 minutes. I was talking. I, I was trying to decide what to do. The cop car came up this way. And then he went by, and then I seen him back up. So I knew he spotted the car in there. So I got out of the car with her, and I ran into the, the woods. I didn't even know where I was going. Now the dogs, there was dogs in his house, started barking, either from me or the cop car or whatever. So the, all, that's what driven. So now I said, let me go over that way. So I stopped here, and she started screaming. She heard the cop car, and she's screaming. 
The cops were up there, they couldn't see where the screaming was coming from, but they, they were by that empty car. But we were now 40 or 50 feet into the woods. And the empty car is the victim's car. Right. It's her car. Right. Her car was right around, right around here. We're, we're back to back here. I could see the cops because they had flashlights and everything, but they couldn't see me, but they could hear her screaming. So I panicked and I stabbed her. Well, I tried to shut her up and then I took off and I ran behind this house, behind this house and between these two houses because the doors were backing from this house and I came back across here. Now the cops were out here, flashlights then, I ran right, they didn't see me. And I ran this way, so they're thinking I'm still running into the woods. I came back the other way. And when I ran from that second house, I ran, a, I would say a straight line, maybe it's, you know, a little curved or anything, I almost fell over the well. Okay. So if you get the address of this house, it's directly opposite. It's directly out from the end of the house. It's almost directly opposite, and I would say 150 to 175 yards in. You'd have a yeah. Now there might it looked like there's a whole housing that development there. Yeah. All right, and and let me just back to this street here. That that the street that the Mon, it's the Montvale ice skating rink that used to be right. on that street. Down down here further. All right, so street. that's down here for. But you're right. sure you weren't over the New York line yet? No, because my uncle lives up the other way. Remember I took yeah, you up the road? He's like Upper Saddle River or something he lived in? Well, that, that is Upper Saddle River. But, but if you kept going this way, Rockland County is right, right here. Right. But you're sure no. that the ice rink is here, but you were still in Montville. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was... This whole area was my killing ground, yeah. if you want to call it that. So I knew the area. And then when I ran, I ran, like I said, I almost tripped over it. had a big piece of corrugated metal over it. And then I ran out here, and I got back on this road. I ran over through the woods and everything, behind some other houses here, and I ran on this road, and that's how, and I ran, I, got all, I walked all the way back to Westwood. That's why I know, if, if you find out where that, that girl, where they write up the girl, then you get land records, you'll know the exact right, right to the inch where this second house was. Right. But the houses aren't there no more. Because we weren't by, there were no houses there, I don't think. If I would have seen three houses, I would have said, yeah, this is it. Well, there might yeah. be three houses, but there might be a hundred next to them now. They were old, they were old farmhouses. Okay. Yeah, it's but not, it's if not you get a report to that, and, and they so Let me backtrack a minute. So, just for the girl that, that, so, you're positive you abducted that girl from the Bergen Mall. That's the mall that you, you kept... <laughs> Well, I can't say that. Okay. I, it was either that, I'm 90% I'm sure it was the Bergen Mall, but it could have been the Garden State Mall. Okay. But it's one of the malls that... Oh, one of those two. Okay. Guaranteed 100%. It was about, uh, it was dark. I would say it was probably about 6.30, 6 o'clock, 6.30. And give me just approximately a year. You, 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 when did you move to Lodi? Ooh, from low -rise? No, to low -rise. So you, at this point, did you still live in Rivervale? No, no, I used to live in Little Ferry. Oh, right, okay. I used to live so, in Little Ferry from 1970 to like 73, I think. Okay. And then I moved to Lodi. Prior to 70, where were you living? Rivervale. Right, that's what I thought. So when this happened, though, were you living in Rivervale I or don't, Little Ferry? I don't remember. I think... Although Cottingham can recall the specifics of his crimes, he doesn't keep track of basic information, such as where he was living at the time. Cottingham took pride and pleasure in his kills, and serial killers often replay them in their minds. Right now on my Patreon, you can watch the most shocking interrogation you'll ever see by far. What happens in this interrogation room is certainly not suitable for YouTube, and it will leave you completely shocked. Go to patreon.com slash strangerstoriesplus to watch it plus many other Patreon-exclusive videos. No, no, I, I definitely wasn't living in Riverdale. Okay, so then you think it had to be after 1970 then? No, I definitely was Then it would have to be after 1970, the early 70s. Okay. Be, yeah, I never thought of it that way. No, it had, because 
what I did was, see, one of my, okay, there's, there's a diner on Route 4. It was, a, it was a pretty famous diner back then and probably still there. Uh, okay. Which, which, the which, diner was near the Bergen Mall? What I did was I parked my car, it's a 24 hour diner, that's where I parked my car. I've done this a couple of times. So my car would be, if, it, if I didn't come back for a day, there's always people coming and going. They never, then I would go in, the diner had a, f I use this, then I use the next thing here. You, you, it's not much of a diet at this point. Yeah. Route 4, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the, if the diner, there's Forest Avenue, you go right down to Route 4. Mm -hmm. There used to be a diner on the corner of Forest Avenue and Route 4. And the building's still there, but it's not a diner. Anymore. And opposite that diner, if you go across the highway this way, was there a walkway? Yeah. Yes. Goes so <laughs> over to the Burning Mall. Burning Mall. Right right. 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 Because that's what I did. I parked my car there and I walked across the thing into the mall. And then I walked around the mall. One of the difficulties of working on older cases is how the scene changes over time. Buildings can be enlarged or torn down completely. New roads can cut through what was once an empty field, and waterways can shift or dry up completely. So and how did you get her? How did, you, how did you end up getting her back in her car? Anything that helps me? No, she was getting into a car and I just pushed my way in. Okay. That's how I always did. Cottingham often left the bodies at the scene of the murder, but he would travel great distances to transport others this made discovering a pattern to the murders more difficult. And then you take you take her car. Then, it, you know, I push my way in. I, I handcuffed her. I tied. I didn't handcuff. I tied her up. And then we just drove up the Montville. Okay. So then once you're up this way, and you're solid, you're rock solid in the Montville. I'm rock. I'm rock. Okay. The only thing I can say, I'm rock. I'm rock solid about this whole thing. 90% sure that's the intersection. I can't believe there's any other intersection. But when, when we drove... Well, you, you just drew like a little street going this way. There is a particular street that's still there where this comes up. As you go across Chestnut Ridge Road, there's a 45 degree angle going this way. And then the street continues up this way, going towards, going into Upper Saddle River and Route 17. Going towards Route 17. Well, but I don't know if it was like that back then. I, I did this, the, that's the direction where, where my uncle lives. You know, it's at this intersection here, if I, if I made a right turn, that's when we went down to where my, my uncle lived. Okay. About a mile down there. That's why I knew the area. That's why I'm 90, 90, 95%. That has to be the, the intersection. Okay. It's just that it looks so different now, I mean. But you're positive this is off of Chestnut Ridge Road, which, or off of the street where the, where the Montvale Ice Skating Rink was on. The Montvale Ice Rink was on Chestnut Ridge Road. Almost certain. Okay. You know, you're, you're putting doubts in my head. <laughs> no, I don't want to I, I know you're not, you don't want it, but I, you know. Being I'll, a guy from Rivervale, I would think you would know when you were in Montvale. That's why, I just want to be sure. No, not really. Okay. No, but like I said, I went to this place 20 times. Mm -hmm. But I always would come up here and then, see, I could only go during the winter. That's another thing. It had to be a cold month because during the summer, this was all corn. You couldn't drive over. Okay. So in the winter, it was all cut down. You know, I, I'm not saying it could have been fall, but I mean, it had to, not summer or anything when the corn was growing. And I always would come up and then just drive right across, right across the field, turn around, and it's fine. Yeah, you know, I might be over here one time here, yeah, but it was always usually within 50 feet. It was, uh, it was, it was beautiful because I, I could command this whole view. Mm -hmm. And I could, you know, and, and there was no traffic. I mean, maybe a car would go by every 10 minutes. That's how little traffic was back then. Mm -hmm. It was all cornfield, all woods and cornfield. There was no, uh, this, the only light was at this corner. There was a traffic signal there? There was a traffic thing, you know, I, I think, it, but I think I, I think it used to just blink. I don't think it was a red and green. I think it was like a flashing, like a flashing yellow or flashing red type thing. Okay. So they didn't have to actually come to a stop. Go back so I can research this a little better. You, you mentioned you stabbed her. Do you know for sure 
Uh, yeah. How many times you stabbed her? I think one time. Okay. Right in the face. Oh, it was definitely in the face. Because okay. she was screaming. That I just had okay. just, just trying to shut her. Stabbing wasn't one of Cottingham's favorite methods. He liked to inflict as much pain as possible and usually strangle them. Stop her from screaming. And she would have been tied up in some way. At that point, I don't. I don't even know. If, she might have even been loose. I might have untied her. Because we were in the car for about 10, 15 minutes before that. Because I couldn't, I, I, was, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't back out. I couldn't go forward. Right. So, and, so I didn't know what to, I, you know, I didn't want to hurt the curl of the head. You know, that, I wouldn't have done that. So, mm -hmm. And if the cop car didn't come by, I don't know what I would have done. We were, I, in fact, I was thinking both of us get out and push the car. <laughs> and I can tell you, she was dressed. And she had a suit on. She had like a suit jacket and a tie. A tie? Yeah, a tie. About how old was she? Uh, early twenties, I would say. Okay. Dark hair. You love dark hair. You. Not. You know the funny thing is, most of my victims are dark, but I, I like them. I don't. So, all right, I, got, I, I have something to work with on that. What kind of car? Any idea what kind of car it was? I have no idea. Okay. Man, it, it, it was a regular. I mean, it wasn't stick that I know. But uh, Now, tell me about the well. How did you ever first find the well? Uh, in the beginning, I wanted to find a place to drop the body. But see, I always like to drop them near the side of the street so I can be found there easy. And most of them, you'll sign over the thing. Almost all mine were. But in the beginning, I didn't think that way. But then I think, yeah, I didn't want these people rotten, you know. Mm -hmm. So I got a little settlement. I say, if you drop them near the street, somebody will find them in a day or two. But I, wa I walked. I, I might have just got out to take the leak or something, but I, I walked back. You could walk from this field. This field was all solid. This, I mean, there was no water, no no wood, no swamp. But when you walk back in here, if you got about 40, 50 feet, it turned to swamp. You know, where there's actually water. You know, you couldn't actually walk dry. And I was walking back there to see if I could find a place to, you know, to hide a body. Were you by yourself when you first discovered it? Like you were just on like a scouting mission, or did you actually have a body in there the first time? Do you know? I had, I had a body. Okay. And uh, I had a the first time I, I seen it. I didn't know what it was. That's what it was. I walked on it, and it was tin. It was like it was like a galvanized round type, you know, like corrugated? Yeah, it was like, it was like, I'd say eight foot long, ten foot long, five foot wide. So they, it was a big, yeah, it was a big piece. Because I walked on it, I realized it's like ground no more. And it was like metal. But it was pitch pitch black, I couldn't see what it was. I didn't have no flashlight, and I didn't carry a flashlight or a light or anything. The next time I came back, I was earlier. It was only about 8 o'clock at night. It was still dark, but it was early. It was lighter, or the water moon was out or something. So I went back to see what it was. And I seen it was a metal piece. So I moved it, and I couldn't see nothing. It was pitch black. So I dropped the rock. It went down, it sounded like 100 feet, but it went down about 20 feet, 15, 20 feet. And uh, I seen the side. The side, it was, it was like a well. It looked like... But not brick like stone or old cinder block or something like 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 an old time cistern or something mm -hmm. that somebody covered up so that would fall in. And then I said, "Hey, this is a good spot." And then I, I remember the three girls that dropped in there, and then then I said, then I started thinking about them rotting in there. And I, I got I said, "Nah, that's why I started dropping them by the side of the streets." So this, there, you, you only used that well for three bodies. Just three. This would have been the fourth one, but she got away. I don't know if I was going to put her in there. 
Because I, I, after those three were in there, I went back there many times, but I, I never put nobody else in there. Okay. So I, I don't know what's... It wasn't always planned. It was, you know, just how, how things came out, you know. I don't know if, if, if we would if this wasn't, if this, it just looked different to me that time. I thought I might get stuck, that's why I went around the other way. I would have went back, I don't know if I would have dropped there in the well as the fourth one or not. But I brought quite a few others after that that I didn't, after that three I never went back to that well. But you would go back to this field. Oh, then yeah. I'm, and then, I'm, then you would just go dump the body somewhere else. Right. Okay. The three, the three girls that uh, are in the well. Any ideas uh, to help with those? Like, do you remember them at all? No. Where they came from? How they were killed? Anything? One was a hooker. Many of Cottingham's victims were prostitutes, as most did not question him about meeting in out-of-the-way locations. One was a hooker that I picked up in Little Ferry. There was a, hook, a, a hooker bar there in Little Ferry I used to go into. And uh, I'm pretty sure. And one was a waitress. I remember she was a waitress. From where? I don't know. I don't know. Local. Local in the area, but I don't know where. I think she was, she was young too, I think. I'm not sure. And the other, the other girl could be a blonde from Atlantic City, but I'm not sure. I'm not, that's what I say. I'm, mi I'm mixed up. Of, it just sometimes it was one after the other, and then sometimes for six months I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. you know? What would have made you bring a girl from Atlantic City all the way up here? Did you go down there? Yeah, I was in Atlantic City. What would have made you bring her all the way up here? So that's where I brought them all. That's what I'm saying. So almost, almost every one of them, not all of them, right? but almost every one of them. So let's assume for a minute that you killed a girl in this field. Forget the well for a minute. You, you killed a girl in this field. What would you do then? Would you just take a dead body and put it in your car to go dump it somewhere? Well, I would, if I was in her car, I would just go to different places. You know, I've gone up to New York State. I've driven from there all the way out to the end of Long Island. How would you get back? What? How would you get back? You I would just drop the body and then come back with the car. Okay. And drop the car wherever. Sometimes it would be in my own car. But I never I never drove my own car across there. So I was always afraid of getting stuck. I always knew if I got stuck, I could just run. Right. But I never, never took my car in there. Like I said, a lot of times I would leave it in the, all the 24-hour time, and it was, it was beautiful. The car could stay there forever, right. nobody ever know. Nobody looked for it, and I could always, I always knew it. once I, get, I make it back to that diner, I'm okay. And that one on roof there had a big back parking lot. Had a little small one on the front facing the Route 4, but in the back was enormous, like 70, 80 cars could fit there. It was a good, nice diner, good food in there. But I would always pick it. That's why nobody ever knew what was going on because I I would drive three hours out to Montauk. We were body dead. Next time I'd go there, well, we're down the turnpike until I couldn't go no further to travel. We were body dead. So they were never, never connected, never two or three until the very end where I got started getting stupid. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think, what, what year is the first, do you think? Do you have it in your head or you have no idea? Well, I can knock it down to one or two years. What do you think? How far back? 67. 60, maybe the end of 66. 67. It's a lot of years of running around. A lot of states still. Yeah. Do you have, any, do you have a number in your head that you think? Did you, ever, did you ever sit back and think about it? It's sad to say I, I couldn't count that high. They, they, did, they start to get jumbled. I would say it's well over 80. You think that many? Well over. I've done some in Florida. K-9. 
Connecticut, part of New York, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Baltimore. Right? Any place within driving distance that was not connected to me, I would try. Uh, my whole thing was not to make a pattern, which I never did. Not, and never to try to kill them the exact same way or to, you know, leave a signature. You know? I, was, I wasn't stupid, you know. And other than that one time in Hackensack where just luck, I would have been caught there. Right. Mm -hmm. I was never even, even close to getting caught. Other than that one time. Did you end up dumping that girl after that cop stopped you? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't even remember who she was. But I was coming back from Montreal at the time. And that's what it was at. I was coming back, coming down River Road. And I was doing a day, too. And I never really did anything during the day, but it was like 11 o'clock in the morning. I can remember certain little facts about everything until I start thinking, you know, mm -hmm. every once then something, something might pop in. And we'll, but a lot of run, a lot, a lot of runaways. See, a lot, of, a lot of the girls were hitchhikers, mm -hmm. runaways. There was a lot of hitchhikers back then too. Oh, everybody hitchhiked. You know, every, every day going to work, I could, I, could get, I used to get more rides. Let's see, that was the thing with me. I, I wasn't. I wasn't a serial killer. It, it, no, it's, you just told me you think you killed eight over eight. Yeah. That, that fits the definition pretty well. No, it doesn't. But I know what you say, because you've told me in the past, there's been many more that you let go. Hundreds. Yeah. In other words, I didn't go out to kill somebody. M most anyone I killed was when I would be somehow connected to them, and I didn't want to get caught. It was more than just not getting caught. I you was know, just thinking about myself. What do you mean connected? Meaning like somebody might have seen her get well, in like the car the, or... Yeah, like in the Bergen Mall. You know, I walked around the mall. I walked in the parking lot, walked, followed her into the parking lot. Anybody could have sit in the car. Cottingham has killed over 100 women in his estimation, but he doesn't see himself as a serial killer. To me, in my mind, I don't know if anybody's seen me. Mm -hmm. You know, that to me, you know, like I tell you, one time in Atlantic City, and I met a girl in, in, in the uh, in the uh, in resorts. She went with me, and I brought her back up here. In my mind, hey, I could be on a camera down there or whatever. So those were the ones I couldn't leave. But if if the girl wasn't dangerous to me, I never I, ne I never went out to kill. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't say I said I'm not really like. A standard serial killer. I didn't. I didn't get it no joint on its own one. And that's the truth. Never had no joint. It was very hard. So what was the thrill? Was it more rape? Control? Tying no, up? It was the game. It was being able to get away with it. The stalking. The, the, to be able to. To be able to do it. It was like the perfect murder every time. You see something in the paper, a body was trying to hit, you never heard of it because there was never nothing after that. You know, no cops ever came around me or stiffed the rain like, like you see on TV. Mm -hmm. It was getting away with it. And uh, even a lot of times, it, it was control. But I mean, I thought we didn't even have sex sometimes. Another reason Cottingham doesn't believe he is a serial killer is that he took no pleasure from the act of killing and that his only enjoyment came from getting away with murder. A lot of times, sometimes. It was more, the, I used to say, the hardest, see, I, when I was doing the hookers, the hardest thing in the world is to be the hooker. And when I mean be the mm hooker, -hmm. right. The out hustle, because they are sharp. You don't understand that because you never was in the... If you would have seen New York City hookers in the 60s, they were sharp. And they would never do anything, ever, until you paid them first. I mean, it was like religion. But I would get them so greedy by showing so much money. I would, I would show them a wide, like $1,000, $1,200. Their eyes would go crazy. And I'd appear... I, I always appeared... Innocent, naive, green. I I play that act. 
Like I didn't know what I was doing, you know, and I got afraid around them. We're gonna get caught or all this stuff. So in their mind, they're gonna rob me. And it was the game to get, most times we went out drinking. I'd, I'd get them drinking, get them drunk, get them in a room, have all the sex, and what, never paid them. And that's, that was the majority of the thing, that to beat them out of their money, because they were gonna try to beat me out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had cases, I had a case right here, right on Route 46. I had the girl in there. She was so greedy. She took my, she, she was naked from the, from the waist up. She grabbed my pants and ran out of the room with my pants and left her, her shirt behind. And she runs right into a guy next door. He opened his door, he heard the noise. You thought she was stealing your wallet? Or stealing she, she, she was. Yeah. She grabbed it. She, I, she got about $1,100 from me. So the only one that ever got away. Yeah, got, her, got my money. Out of all of them. But she, she did, because I never thought she'd run out without her clothes. Yeah. You know, so I'm pretending I'm drunk and I'm there and I'm laying there. Everything. Man, she made a beeline for that talk. <laughs> That's classic. Oh, I can tell you stories. Sir. I know you can. I know you can. But that was mainly what it was. And then, if there was no harm done other than just beating them. I mean, I've had a pimp's chase. I also got a pimp as a buddy, too. <laughs> and I can even tell you his nickname, Lucky. He came after me one time. I'm driving up 3rd Avenue, and it must have been one of the girls that I beat out of her money. And all of a sudden, a car pulls up next to me, and the girl's pointing at me to him. So he starts chasing me. So I'm, run, I'm running down third, I'm in the car, I'm driving down third avenue, not knowing why, and he starts showing a gun. I, I almost had it, I mean, I never carried a gun. I got up to 34th Street. Cottingham takes pleasure in recounting his kills, the same way other men enjoy retelling high school football stories. And I got away from him. <clears throat> I went through red lights and everything. I come back to the same area where I picked her up. I see her with the same guy. So I'm watching for her. See, I used to watch the cops. I, in fact, Lynnell Taylor, if you ever talked to her, you know, we used to sit for hours watching the vice cops pick up all the vice girls to see how they do it. Mm -hmm. How they sit, the one cop here, the one cop here. We followed them all the way down to with senatorial booking, where they took them, what door they went in, what door we came, they came out. One time they, they arrested her. They stopped in a uh, deli to get all the girls. They wanted coffee, so they brought the girl in. I walked into the deli. And then I'm going in. And she, and she's arrested now, right? Yeah. Now I'm trying to figure out how I can get her out of the deli. But, you know, will the cops chase me, leave the other girls, or whatever? Funny. We've had some time. I mean, it was exciting. I still, I, I still an awful lot to figure this one out. Well, look, well, look. I think the only way is if the record and and, and the crime. I swear, last time we talked about this, Rich, that I I went down that road. I, I don't know if you're right with your years. Maybe last time we talked, it was in the 60s. I didn't make them check late enough. I don't remember. The the only reason I say. I had Montvale go way back because Montvale's a small town. There's they, not that you know. But if it was, it wouldn't. It would be the very early '70s or late '60s, and I and I didn't move into Ledgewood Terrace in Little Ferry until May of '70. And if I was driving back that way, if I was living in the river, I wouldn't have been driving back that way. So, and I I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been parked because I I like I said I walked always to Westwood, and then I got a bus in Westwood that took me to Route 4. And then I, I walked along Route 4 to get to that diner. And I don't think I would have been down in that diner if I lived up in Riverville. Okay. So I think I, I was pro probably 70 or 71, 72. Nothing says, even if I was able to find it, yeah. nothing says that it's yeah. not developed all over that I know it's, it's probably or, impossible. Or that obviously we would even we have no you know, who knows how we would even identify anybody in it. I don't even know. But obviously I'd like to find it because we would like to put these three girls to rest somewhere. But that would hit the papers. That's what scares me. That, that you couldn't cover that one up. If they found the bodies now. No, but that doesn't that, that doesn't mean that it's you that hit the papers unless no. you decided to accept responsibility. But then people would have to have 
Yeah, I thought it is too. And they're going to ask, how, how did you know it was located over there? You know, yeah, reporters aren't stupid either. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a tall order trying to find this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I knew last time when we drove you up there that it's just changed so much that it was not, never going to work. Yeah. But we'll try it. I'll try it again. The, um, the, the girl that you talked to me about that looks like that actress, Sherry Athlete, right? Do you remember the stuff that you told me? No. Uh, like, I remember. I remember. I don't want to feed it to you. No, because I want to hear your what you remember about it. I don't remember. You had you had good detail on it. You really did. I remember there was a girl that the name of the picture was Roswell. Yeah, that's the name of the picture she was in. And every time I watched that picture, it reminded me of that girl. Correct. It looked exactly like her for some reason. Exactly what you told. I don't know. That 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 I remember. I gotta play it back in my head. Do you remember you told me you followed her from a store in Hackensack? In Sears. Sears. Yeah. Sears. Sears. So Sears, and bus stop. Sears and Rudge. Did that bring, did that bring it back? No, I didn't follow her to a bus stop. I, I met her in Sears. Okay. I seen that she was buying something. She bought something in Sears. She purchased something in Sears, and a scarf or something like that. And I followed her out of the store. And she walked down Main Street towards the movie theaters down there. I, fought, I was walking behind her seeing where she was going. And she stopped at one of the stores. Either right before the movies or right after the movies. I was looking in the window and I went up next to her and I started talking to her. And I tried, I was trying to get her to go to, if she wanted to go to a movie. And she said, no, she had to be home by 10 o'clock or something like that. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how could... Cottingham sought out victims at every opportunity. There are perhaps hundreds of women who narrowly escaped being one of his victims. How could I get her for some drinks to get some liquor into her or whatever like that? That was right, that was right by the movie theaters. How did you get it? I, I, I told her, I asked her, I got her to agree to go for one drink. you remember how old she was? Uh, I, I think at, well, I don't know how old I was at the time. I don't know what year it was, but I think she was pretty close to my age. She was, we were, you know, I think the early 20s, if I'm not mistaken. But she, she was right around my age. Okay. I think she I think she told me she was divorced. I'm not sure. I think she told me she was divorced or split up with her husband or already? In her early twenties? Yeah. I refer to something like that. Split it up with her. Or it might have been a boyfriend. I think that because we talked about something like that. I don't remember exactly that. And where'd you end up going? I got, I got her to go to the Holiday Inn in Littlebury on the circle there. And that's where I had my car parked. You had a walk there? No, we, we took a bus. Oh, okay. No, no, we took a cab. We, took a, we went to get a bus and, and there was no buses that were going down. I was trying to get the bus that, I used to catch a bus in Little Ferry to go to New York. So the bus came from up in Hackensack. So I was trying to catch the bus that came through Hackensack that went to Little Ferry. And either there was none at that time of night or, I don't know if it was a weekend or not. I don't remember. But we wound up, we wound up taking a cab. We took the cab to the little ferry. The little ferry. Oh, I had my. I didn't tell her. Yeah, I didn't want to mention the, the Holiday Inn itself, as, mm -hmm. you know, as, as the thing. But I told her it was a nice lounge there, and I said my car is parked there, because I parked. That's another place I parked my car, right next to the Valley Fair. I parked it in the, the Holiday Inn parking lot because nobody, you know, your car is anonymous. It could stay there. If I never had to come back in two days, it would still be there, and nobody would be saying, "What's this car?" You know. So I parked a lot of times right there. And uh, 
we went, in, we went into the lounge, there was no, only like about 10 people in there. It was really, really empty, I remember. I thought this was good because we sat in the back. But I got the feeling she wasn't going to do nothing, you know. I, you know, I just, you know how you can tell, you know. She had two drinks. I got a second drink into her. I can tell you one thing. I, I, if they if they have, I can tell you a last meal. I can tell you what your stomach contents would say. Pizza. You I ate pizza there? No, no, not there. Later on, but we stopped and we got some pizza about, about 11 o'clock at night. Okay. I think in Hackensack. Mm -hmm. But that's where we went. We went for pizza later. So let, let, she should have pizza in her stomach. And then where'd you go? Now I'm telling you too much. We haven't made no deal yet. We ain't you, got me, you got me talking. You got me talking. Nothing you didn't tell me on the car ride back to Trenton. I don't remember that. I gotta show you my notes. Back then I had a Blackberry. While, I, while Jimmy McMorrow was driving, you were in the back seat talking. I was texting, my, I was uh, emailing myself on my Blackberry. Suddenly, Cottingham feels like he has given the investigators too much information and he is afraid it will affect his ability to negotiate. With bullet points of what you were saying. So I wouldn't forget the detail you were giving me. I remember that. Because I remember, now I don't remember telling you about the thing, but I remember, I remember one time going back, I said, he's recording what I was, that's what I told you to do. No, I was, yeah, I never said, recorded. He's recording one thing. I was telling you, actually, I remember I said to myself, I'm going to shut up because he's, re I was typing out. Yeah, I can see you doing something from the back. And I didn't want to forget what you were saying, because you, you were giving a lot of detail. So where did you end up taking her after pizza? Where did you end up actually killing her? So now I'm going to leave that. We've got to still work out a deal. We've still got to, we got, we got to work. I understand. Before I start doing all this. Well, there's no Miranda, there's no nothing. Like we talked I, about. Know, right? I, want to, I want to see what, if it matches what I have upstairs in my notes. I want to make sure that you, your, your memory hasn't faded in the last four years. I remember he has faded a lot. You remember her though. I remember Sherry Apple. That, that's how I call it. I had never heard of Sherry Appleby until you told me. I never knew. I never. I never heard of the show Roswell until you told but me. That, the, the funny thing is the show came out 10, 15 years later. Yeah. Was that I think it was in the 90s the show came out. And that's what I remember. Yeah. Right as soon as I seen that girl, I said, that reminds me of that girl. But at, at that time, I didn't know anything about Sherry Appleby. Mm -hmm. Do you remember saying she was a dead ringer? Yeah. Uh, do you yeah. remember where you dumped her? Yeah. You do for sure? Town or just... Or you just think you remember just in your head you're seeing it? you gotta, you got to remember everything was so different back then. I know. You know, it was... E even... Even in Little Ferry and Lola, in Lower Woods, I mean, at night there was no lights. There was, you know, you couldn't just, you couldn't see in front of your hand half the time. Mm -hmm. You know, once you got towards Hackensack, it all got lit up. And, or toward Little, you know, the circle there. But when, when you went into the, the side streets, the town was doing no lights, there was no streets. All empty, lot, you know, lots. There was, there was still farmland back then. You know, everything is, everything is, you know, every, boundaries of different towns would blend in one into the other, you know. Back then you didn't know when you went into the next town. If you didn't see the little sign entering Paramus or entering Saddleburg or entering Little Ferry or whatever, you, you didn't know you were in another town. I mean, but that way, so you could be in another town 10 minutes and not realize you were in that town. Right. So that's why a lot of times I can't say I was in Paramus versus yeah, Santa Barbara. Meanwhile, right. right. I understand. It was, you could drive for 15 minutes and not have to even see a house back then sometimes. 
So the, what makes the, you just said yes quickly when I asked you? Do you, do you know where you dumped her? What what makes you say yes then? Do you, you just have a vision of it, or do you know what street, or do you know what town? I think I know pretty close to where I dropped her. Okay. I'm not sure though. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not sure. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> because when I start thinking about something, then I think, well, maybe that was this one. Right. You know, maybe, like I said, I just, now I just remember she had, we had the pizza. I, you know, little things like that, you know, just for some reason I'll remember it. Right. But, that, you know, I... That, well, where do you think you don't know? Well, now I'm going to keep that. I'll tell you if you're wrong. <laughs> I think I dumped her in a river for a stream. Okay. Any idea what that much? I'm not sure if she went in the water or not. It was too dark. Okay. I heard a little water. I looked down. I couldn't see if she went in the water. I couldn't even see her. Mm -hmm. I went down a, a steep... Several of Cottingham's victims were found in or near water. Like an eight-foot drop. It's very sharp. And uh, the only thing I'll say is it was below half a second. If you went down Essex Street, it was if you got out of Hackensack. Do you remember how she was killed? Probably as for sophisticated. Rob. That's how I did most of mine. Right. You don't, do you remember specifically with her? No. Okay. So you're just kind of guessing because you go on the front when I go on the front averages. Yeah. I mean, she, I know she wasn't shot. I didn't shoot, right. you know. Yeah, no, I know that. You know, things like that, you know. Well, like the, the girl up here, but, like, like the girl up here who stabbed, which is not, you know, not your. That point. was very unique, and that's only because I panicked. I, I didn't intend to. And, it, and it, it, was, it was a steak knife. That, 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 it was a steak knife and the knife broke. That's another fact. If you find it, the incident, you'll see. Okay. Then it wasn't even it wasn't a, a regular knife like a, a guy. It was a steak knife from one of the places we stopped at. Mm. That took the steak knife. If I told you that that girl, the, the girl that I'm thinking of, was stabbed, not to death, but stabbed one time, does that bring back any memory? Not it did, was not by any means what killed her. See, possibly. See, I used to always fuck around with a knife with them. You know, that's why I used to put the little marks on them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'd stab them just, never stab them, stab them like, but just puncture them sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that could be possible, but it wouldn't have been like, a five-inch stab wound or anything like that. I would remember that. Uh, that. But you know what I remember? A lot of times I was drunk out of my mind. Too. Right. So you might not remember too. Yeah. You know, or I remember different. You know. Yeah. No, I must. You know, I don't sit there and think about these. Things. I try not to even think about these things. Well, Rich, so many things too. Uh, um, you're thinking of like if you were to. Give me everything you got that somehow I'm going to put it put it to dozens of murders all over the place. You see the, 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 the lack of detail you have on, on a lot of these things, and even some of the detail, like you said, you think is with one, it might belong to another one. And I'm being honest. And I mean, it's easier to think, or maybe not be, this might not be as successful as you, as you think it would be in terms of what I, my successful meaning on my end. Um, and that's why a project for so much detail, because that's about the only way that you could figure out one case from another. I told you in the very, very beginning, most of the detail is not going to be detailed. You know, most of the detail is be, I dropped this body off at Roadmark, so-so on the Jersey Turnpike. Mm -hmm. And you look up and you'll find a body was dropped there. But now, for me to tell you what girl it was, I can't remember. The one I dropped, I dropped off way out in Long Island. I remember driving out there. I remember I could 
go to the street, go down there, I went there, I turned the car, and I, I, there was a fence there, and I threw it over the fence. But the tell t- t- you, was it the one I got hitchhiking over here in Paramus, so was it, you know, until I know more facts, or I see a picture, or something distinctive, or something, I, you know, there was just too many, I, I just don't remember. Keeping track of the identities of the women hasn't been high on Cottingham's priority list. It's entirely possible that he didn't even know the names of some of them. He killed several in most locations, which would also make it harder to keep the individual details straight. I can tell you how I always did these things, but, you know... See, you might think the number I threw out 80 is being a lot. But for every one that I killed, i had done this to 30 other girls. Mm-hmm. For every one, hundreds. I was out there every night, like an animal. And most, like I said, I didn't kill and everything. So I have those pictures in my mind, too. I remember funny things, and it's, and it's oh, no, that she's still there. She's still walking around or whatever. Like Linnell, you know. Linnell was with me for like three months. Yeah. You know, I didn't kill her. You know? I think longer than that. Was it? I think longer, yeah. That's the one we were in Baltimore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yet, I'll remember, I remember her last name was Ziegler. Now, how, how do I remember? I just remember. Yeah. I remember sitting out in front of her, she took me to her house in Teaneck. We sat out and looked at her family's house. I remember that. But I don't remember ever hitting her. Ever. I think she was lying there, because I just didn't. And then you gotta remember, I had regular girlfriends. <laughs> you know, I was juggling a girlfriend here, my wife here, Girlfriend here, Linnell was here, you know. I'd go from one to, I mean, it was it was a comedy. Mm-hmm. I'd leave work at 11, I'd go up and I'd pick Jean Connolly up at Montefiore Hospital. I'd take her down to one of the bars, Flanagan's or something. We'd spend till 2 o'clock, take her back and then go over to Barbara Lucas's house, spend an hour or two at the end, then I'd drop by Linnell. And then I'd go home and I'd be home by 5, 5.30. Mm-hmm. And this was a constant thing. And before all that, I didn't go out scouting the hookage, you know, all the strolls and everything, you know, and if something popped up there, then it was a thing of chance. What, what made you on certain nights say, go see your girlfriend versus end up going out and, and looking to rape somebody? Is there, was there anything that triggered it? Like, what made you want to hunt on a certain I night? I didn't ever say I'm going to go out and rape somebody. I, I very rarely raped anybody. Well, what made you, like, let's say, what, what would make you go scout looking for to, to hurt a girl? Versus, what, I, is there anything that happened during the day? Like, is there something you can look back on and go, you know what? You're trying to see a psychologist. I'm just interested. I'm actually uh, intrigued. Um, because that, when you brought up the girlfriends you had and the things that kept you busy, it was like, what then What, what then did you end up being, what, what happened, like, on a certain day versus that would make you be like, I want to do this tonight versus I'm going to go by Barbara Lucas' house or I'm going to go I, over here? I was, an animal. Uh, so you can't point to some particular thing no. that was like on the, on the, on the days that I no. did this, I would get I mad at somebody or I'd be... I no, don't know. nothing like I went scouting hookers every day, seven days a week, 10 years, 15 years, every day. If I went to pick up my car, that's how I met them now. I went to pick up my car, had it on Ninth Avenue and 42nd Street, and she was right in Times Square. And I just walked out, I talked to her, and I got her to come back and wait outside my job until I got off work. Mm. Things just like that, you know. But I was always looking for, for an opportunity or... I guess that's what I'm saying, it was so... I just had the knack I could pick up women. I, I just... I don't know what it was. I'm not a great looking guy. Or, I don't know what it was, but I could walk a block. I can see a girl walking down a block and within the block know if I could get her into a motel room or something. You know, I'd go out for Baskin Robbins. I'd go out for Baskin Robbins and pick up a girl just right on the street between my job and Baskin Robbins, which is only two blocks, mm. and have her come sit in my car and wait for me for three, four hours until I got off work. And then, you know, things would happen. But every time when I got off work at 11 o'clock, I'd go 
one of the scrolls that was pretty close to my work, and I'd always go down there. I'd, I'd make my little routine loose. I'd see. I'd always look for new girls. You know, the old, a lot of the old, old time girls never paid attention to me because they know I didn't spend no money with them. Mm. You know, so you know, I never spent a dime. Actually, I, you know, that was my thrill. But then by 12 o'clock, I'd have to be up at the hospital, and then I'd come down. I'd be in the bars, you know. But this was seven nights a week. I drank seven nights a week. I went out with these girls every night. Mm. After eight years of marriage and three children, Cottingham's wife grew weary of his long absences and began the legal proceedings for a divorce. She withdrew the petition upon his arrest, then completed the divorce after his conviction. What did that to my poor wife? No. She didn't have a clue. No, well, probably better. They never do, but it's probably better than she didn't. Probably better she didn't. Well, she thought I was cheating on her. Right. You know, she, she, she always accused me of that because, I mean, I never came home at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning and I come home drunk every night. Yeah. And I worked seven. Now, the thing, too, I worked seven. I went to work two years straight when I had a day off. Christmas, we had, I was making so much. That's why I always had money. I was making so much money. I started working $57 a week there. And my first year, I made over $7,000. It was like... $5,000 in overtime and $2,000 regular pay. We didn't even have to ask for all the time. We just sign, sign your name on any shift you wanted to work. Seven days a week, the machines never stopped. That's great. All right. But, if, see, if I never worked shift work, I'd have never gotten in trouble. I was getting off work at 11 o'clock. When I first got married, I'd go home. You know, my wife, she worked, so she's asleep already. I said, sit there and do it alone. So I started going out to the bar and started partying and and what happens in New York, everything opens up at midnight. When did you start working at? Working where? And in New York. That was what year? Sixty four. Oh, that early? Yeah. You were driving and I took the bus. Very young man. Well in sixty four I worked for MetLife. I was driving it. I must have been 17. 64, 46, 56, 17, yeah. And I worked for MetLife for two years, then I went over to Blue Cross. But I always worked the shift work in Blue Cross. Cottingham is more apologetic for speaking badly about one of his victims than he is about killing her. And you get out of work at 11 o'clock in New York City, all the nurses from all the hospitals get off work at the same time, and all the cops get off work in the fire. So the bars, bars are empty at 10 o'clock and 11 to 12 o'clock. They just fill up. 200 people come in. Now I can stay out all night, so if that was one of the reasons I could pick up these broads. I could stay and drink all night long, and I had money to spend. Mm -hmm. You sleep during the day like you do now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I never, I never needed money. I'd go home at 5 o'clock. 5.30, and by 7 I was up. I never I never needed that much sleep. I wasn't a guy that needed, I never slept eight hours, I don't think, in my life. Now I don't sleep more than an hour at a time. I sleep five or six times. Mm. But the city is, you know, if I didn't work shifts, I, would never, I don't think I would have ever done anything. And the drinking didn't help. No, I don't blame anything on the drinking, but... No, listen, you, obviously, you know, you had Vinya. There was some, there was... Well, if... If I was the type like you, I'm only assuming because I don't know how you drink, but a normal person where after four or five drinks I was loaded, then I couldn't have done nothing. But I can go in, yeah. I can go in and, and drink 15, 20 drinks and then be completely normal. I mean, go out driving around, driving all over the city, you know, I had one accident on the George Washington Turnpike, George Washington Bridge. But many nights I never know how I got home. I don't, I, you know, I don't know if I took the bridge home or the tunnel. I can never remember. Mm. But I, I was always, I beat a ticket right here in Hackensack because I was going 95 miles an hour. And the judge felt sorry for me. He says, any man that drives 95 miles an hour can't be that drunk. 
and I was I hit the thing, the breath of the at 1.0, right on the nose. So it could have went either way at that time. I don't know if it's slower now. But it, it was 1.0. Yeah, it's 0.08 now. So we found me innocent. The cop got crazy, went crazy. Went crazy. But I could drive. I could I never had an accident, you know, other than the one time. Hmm. So what, what do you think is going to help you to put detail to some of these things? I mean, I don't, I don't want to like show you pictures, or I don't want to, you know, it's really, it's really just talking about it to me. It seems like detail comes back to you. I mean, you had a lot of detail on the the Vogel, the Nancy Vogel one, the, the one that we got. Like, what made that one stick in your head so I much? I told you because I went out with her. She, I hate to say it, she was a slut. I don't want to, you know, Spanish. she's dead yeah. now and everything. I mean, she was a nice woman, but she was very unhappy. She picked me up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went out with her about four or five times. You know, we had drinks right in the Holiday Inn there, because she used to go to the Valley Fair. And then we'd go over into the Valley Inn today, Holiday Inn. We'd, cause that place it was anonymous. She'd go into that lounge. It was never empty full. It was always empty. And you can stay by yourself in a corner booth. But I didn't have really that. I didn't remember. I remember basically where I dropped it. That, that's what I remember in most of them. Like I say, you know. See, there's also cases. That if I tell you the truth, you'll think I'm lying. Like what? What does that mean? I think I told you once before that I, just by luck, well, okay, but just by its happenstance, you can kill somebody one way and it'll appear to be a different way. And some of the people that you will say were assisticated weren't assisticated. I can't, I never can pronounce that word. That's I can't say it. I don't know why. I can't say that word. Strangled, choked, whatever. <laughs> Smothered. <laughs> but, and I'll say, and if I tell you the truth how they really were killed, you're going to say, full shit. Because the death certificate is going to say a different way. Okay. So how would they be killed then? They would drown. How? How would a drowning not look like a drowning? Because if you drop a body in the summer, in the heat, all the water must evaporate from the body, if the body's not found right away. So now there's no water in the lungs or anything anymore. And, it, and the only reason I read it, I read it, you know, some reports in paper, a couple of times, this girl was sophisticated, and I didn't know. And I really, they didn't realize that they were drowned. I can't speak. I can't speak to how like, how exact the science of I don't know. Uh, of it, autopsies were back in the sixties or seventies. You know, so I, I bet know. even now they couldn't tell. Yeah, I don't know if that's because true or not. You leave a body out where it's, it starts to decay. You know, after two or three days, you can't tell it was it was drowned because there's no water in the lungs. The lungs, everything's collapsed already. We don't have that, well, at least here in Bergen County, we don't really have that many uh, no. decaying bodies like that. No, or unsolved, I should say. My, not, not many of our cold cases have anything to do with decaying bodies. So I don't know that that's the case of anything that's here in Bergen. I can't speak to any other, of the other counties. Well, I can tell you for a fact, it is here in Bergen. I don't yes. remember any of them that are no. uh, certainly not decaying. Cottingham makes the odd claim that some of his victims didn't die the way the medical examiner said they did. The most likely explanation is that they died without him realizing it. And he attempted to drown them. But there's well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just using that word. But I'm saying, if if it's in the summer and it's it's left in the heat, I'm assuming what happens is all the water dries up. So there is no water in the lungs hmm. that would determine. And it would be the farthest thing you would think somebody's. You find them in a lot. You wouldn't ever even think about drowning. What would make you drown somebody and then bring them back in the car? Why would you leave them in the water? Because they weren't drowned. <laughs> or a bathtub, whatever, right? So oh, you got to get about a bathtub, don't you? Yeah, I guess it depends <laughs> where you are. Right. Like I said, I did things in all different ways. 
But I told you that at the very beginning. You did tell me that. I remember. You did tell me that at the very beginning. Because I always said, you know, this is the perfect murder. I mean, they can't tell, obviously. And then, you know, I, and I thought about it. And I said, well, you know, the heat dry, dries everything up. The body's all dry. Why would you think somebody's drowned? The only way to tell is water in the lungs. So, if it's, you know, the lungs are clapped, you think just smothered. Hmm. And there are cases right there. Well, you have to enlighten me, then, so I can look at them. That's not the way. You have to enlighten me, because I, I don't know that I do. But, that, that, but that's what I know. But that's that's why I'm saying that if I if I tell you the truth, you'll think I'm lying. So I can tell you a lie, and you'll think I'm telling the truth. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, I, got, I need you to tell me what you remember. That's all. I mean, and if it marries up to something, it marries up to something. If it doesn't, then uh. Then it doesn't, or, you know. You know? No. So what do you think? What do you, what do you, when you, you keep saying when we come to an agreement, what, what is it in the agreement? That, what, is, what does that mean? Tell me what that means in your mind. Besides the obvious that I know already, which is you're looking for it not to get back to your children. The likelihood of Cottingham's not finding out about any of these murders is slim. There's nothing the detectives can do to hide this information if it proves to be correct. Well, that, that's the, the main thing. But we got to talk about what I'm going to get out of it. The, first, you know, the satisfaction of righting a wrong. No, that's what no, you get out of it. I, 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 I think I'm you're not, almost at that point. Uh, what do you want for dinner tonight? Let's start with the simple. What do we, what do we eat tonight? We're getting, we're getting off track here. Got it. What what is, what is, what are you thinking for dinner tonight? What kind of food? I really don't know. And um, nothing striking your fancy at the moment? Everything. Nothing. You know, it's, <laughs> it's like I don't need anything expensive. You know, it, no, I, that's, I well, that's good because I didn't really want to splurge on you because you haven't given me anything. Good. Kentucky Fried Chicken would be good. Really? Yeah. I don't need that. Really? No, I'm not joining the Kentucky Fries. No, me neither. What else? You make some suggestions. I don't think it's wrong. I gotta take a leave. Excuse me, man. This is the worst diagram I've ever seen. I thought you were such a good drawer. It may be a great, great drawer. I can't, I can't even pick up anything anymore. Every, every ten minutes, my hands part of the carpal ball. They say it is, but I don't think. Cottingham's confirmed killings resulted in nine convictions and a further eight confessions under non-prosecution agreements, leading to him serving multiple life sentences in New Jersey prisons. In 2009, decades after his first five murder convictions, Cottingham told a journalist that he had committed at least 80 to 100 perfect murders of women in various regions of the United States. In April 2021, Cottingham confessed to an unsolved 1974 double homicide in Montvale, one of New Jersey's most notorious cold cases. The confession was extracted by Angelotti weeks before his retirement and was facilitated by Vronsky and by Jennifer Weiss, the daughter of Didi Gazzari, one of Cottingham's later victims. Vronsky and Weiss had been meeting with Cottingham in prison since the spring of 2017, counseling him to make the confession. In March 2023, Angelotti elicited another confession from Cottingham the murder of a 17-year-old who vanished in January 1967. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, there is a Patreon link in the description where you can support the channel further. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.